Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the hosts of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Berizaki. Thanks again for joining us for Growing in Grace. I'm Mike Kapler with my friend Joel Brzezinski, and we're just here to have some informal discussion on uh, the gospel and this incredible unconditional love that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, both Joel and I have been involved in Christian radio, uh, Christian music radio, for quite a few years now. I, I guess it's been over 10 years uh, since 1994. We've worked together in radio and and here we are with just a, a heart for this uh, this Grace Walk message. Uh, so we we every once in a while, well, once a week anyway, we get together and and just uh, talk about some of the things that we have observed or learned or want to know more about. Right, Joel? Okay, well, I get excited talking about this stuff. I love talking about grace. It has never gotten old for me ever since. The day, whether it was a day or whether it was a period of time that this stuff started making sense to me, that I'm not, that I'm not, uh, I'm saved by grace and I'm kept by God's grace. That there's, there's nothing I can do to make God love me more or less. Ever since this all stuff all started clicking together, it's there's never been a time where reading the scriptures or talking about this has bored me. It, it's always exciting to get together and talk about this stuff. I feel the same way, and maybe because, like, I'll bet, like a lot of our listeners uh, out there right now, I, you know, I came to a um, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ when I was young. Um, it doesn't really matter at what point in in life you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that we, we, you and I anyway, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners, came from a perspective where we had probably a lot of legalism that had, had filtered into our, our teaching of the gospel throughout the years. And then when you hear the Grace Walk message, it's so easy to stay excited about this because it is so different than what I had been thinking for most of my life. And even though I had a revelation of some truth, I have come to the conclusion here in recent years that I didn't know as much as I as I thought, and I think that stays with me, Joel. I mean, no matter how much I learn, no matter how much I think I know about the gospel and grace or whatever, uh, it just I I know that it's just a fragment of all the truth that is out there to learn. And uh, well, last week we had uh, kind of been talking about another person who had probably to a far greater extent <laughs> of the experience that that we've had as far as walking and in legalism and then coming to a revelation of God's grace of course we've been talking about Paul and his his journeys and and some of the things that happened in some of the later chapters in Acts and how he had persecuted the church at one time and he had been revolutionized in his life and he came to be one of those who was actually who was actually persecuted you know, so various things happened in his life, all kinds of things. I mean, he got whippings, he got beatings, he got he got persecuted probably far worse than you or I will ever be persecuted. But uh, what was it that Paul was persecuted for, and what was it that Paul originally persecuted Christians for? And let's let's take a look at today as well. What is it that Christians today are persecuted for by the world, and and what do what do Christians these days go around doing? And I think that the legalistic mindset that Paul had come from, I mean, he was born in this, the old Jewish system. He was born in that, and he was raised in it. That was his life. And so when this new thing came around, this new way of salvation, this new way of righteousness being saved by by grace, uh, no way, it can't be. And so he went around, you know, having Christians killed, um, and the church today, it, I don't know. It seems like we have our perspective wrong because, well, you know, I'm not saying not saying everybody does, but in various things that I've seen, it seems like the church today seems to be against this, against that, against everything out there. And instead of the world perhaps viewing Christians as representatives of the Savior of the world, it almost seems like a lot of Christians today are representing. The old way of legalism. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, and and when you go back to Paul, Joel, I think it's interesting to point out that this was a guy like others who thought he was doing the right thing. 
I mean, he wasn't going around killing Christians and persecuting them just just to be mean, you know. I mean, he, he it's not like he it's like it's not like he was trying to be a, a rebel and and do the wrong thing and show off about it. He really thought he was for God. Yeah, he thought he was doing God a service here by getting rid of these people who had this erroneous doctrine which really brought the law to nothing. And uh of course uh, they they embraced the law. Paul did too. And Stephen, who was who was stoned to death, we read uh, in the scripture. Paul was there. He said, "I was there, egging the whole thing on." And uh, I, I just think it's interesting to know to, to stop and realize that Paul thought he was doing God a service. That's right. And sometimes, I, you know, I I started out my early Christian life thinking I was doing God a service. Just before we got um, <laughs> talking here today, Cap, uh, we were joking around. Uh, just a little bit about some things. We were joking around a little bit about uh, picking and choosing uh, verses, picking and choosing verses uh, to kind of fit the moment. And I, I remember picking out verses from the Bible to try to use on my friends to show them how they had to start living right and how and how they, if they weren't living right, see this verse shows you that you need to start doing this. And and God's promises, you see here, it's it's conditional. And I would use a lot of Old Testament scriptures to show how if the, if they would do something right, then God would bless them. And if they would not do it right, God would curse them. And so the church today is, is I think, very guilty of the same thing that, that I had done and uh, that perhaps Paul had done in his lifetime as too. The, uh, Jesus went around talking about how the Pharisees had put heavy burdens on other people, but yet they wouldn't even lift the finger to help them or even do the same things. And today, I, I remember in my early years as a Christian just doing, doing the same thing. So the the persecution that, that Paul, we talked about what he had dished out, but now the persecution that Paul had received, uh, it really came from religious folks, didn't it? I think it, it certainly did come from the from from the legalists but but today joel when we talk about persecution most of the time uh, in, in this day and age at least here where we're from in our western christian culture when we talk about persecution most of us instantly think of unbelievers making fun of our faith right that's not how it was with paul though no uh, he had actually he had he had had you know this he he was walking in this in the in the faith of the fathers, or what he thought was the faith of the fathers, the way of the fathers, the the law, the legal, the legalistic requirements of the law. You had to keep these requirements, and he and it was those same people that he walked with day in and day out uh, that were now persecuting him because he was saying once I believed that you had to do all this stuff. Now I understand that there's this thing called God's righteousness which is unattainable by people except by grace. We can try and we can try and we can work and we can work and, and we can try to do, keep all, the re, all these requirements, but it will never measure up. We will always fall short of God's glory. And so the good news is that Jesus Christ came to, came to, came to pay the price and, and bear the burden of this law. And so he, Paul was persecuted for saying, well, one thing, that Jesus was the Messiah. The Jews had been waiting for years for the Messiah. So not only was Paul saying that Jesus is the Messiah, but he's saying that now, because of this Messiah, you no longer have to keep the righteous requirements of the law in order to be saved. Hmm. Now, I I can remember being kind of a, a younger uh, person, even a kid, uh, when I was a believer. And yeah, I, I did kind of get made fun of a little bit, and, and that was kind of hard, uh, suffering that kind of persecution as a youngster. But as I've gotten older and I look back on my life now, Probably the biggest percentage of uh, so-called persecution that I've had to endure, which is nowhere near anything close to what Paul went through, obviously, but uh, most of what I've had to experience with persecution has come from religious people, um, even even some from within uh, the body of Christ. I, I think I'm I'm the same way. I am more comfortable, <laughs> uh, and I don't know to use, to use the term loosely, I guess. I think I feel more safe sharing the gospel, as I believe it, as I understand it, the gospel of, of saved by grace and, and kept by grace alone uh, with, with my non-Christian friends that I am 
sharing it with, with some of my friends within the church because I, I see them struggling and striving day in and day out to try and, and do this. And I see the roller coaster ride that they're, they're still on, the same roller coaster ride that I used to be on. And it's, it's really hard, uh, to, to communicate this thing when, when their mindset is, is stuck on performance. Mm. Well, I know, um, you know, th- there have been times I've, I've had opportunities to go into churches and either speak to, uh, uh, small groups, adult groups, youth groups. Uh, occasionally, uh, some years ago, I, I would have the opportunity to speak in front of a congregation. It's not my favorite thing to do, to be honest with you. I, I'm in radio, so I like talking to people I can't see, right? <laughs> so getting up in front of people isn't really my thing anyway. But I relate to you. Yeah, I don't think there are very many churches that would really want me to come and, and speak at their church if you know they have any kind of inkling as to what I believe. Just because, and, and I don't even think I'm that radical when it comes to grace compared to some teachers I've heard, but I, I think that there's this fear of um, uh, of communicating this message of freedom that's that's going to cause pastors to lose control of their sheep, <laughs> and so I, I think that there's it's a little discouraging, I guess sometimes, um, you know. But I've been in this long enough to 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 know how to be able to handle Christians who are caught up with that bondage of legalism. Yes, it's. I mean, it's it's a blessing when you're able to share it with somebody and you see the lights go on. And at the same time, there's there's people that this message message is shared with who who, who they become less of a friend if if they think that um, you see things any differently uh, than they do. Well, uh, kind of. I know we've got a few minutes left here. Um, wrap, wrapping up a little bit, Paul uh, at the end of. Galatians 4 and into Galatians 5, he, he was talking about uh, the, the child of promise and the child born of the flesh. And you can read about that in, at the end of Galatians 4. Uh, Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the flesh, of the slave woman, but of the free woman. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Paul could have very easily got himself burdened again by a, slow, a yoke of slavery um, because of the persecution he went under, you know, the, the persecution that he was in. But he stood firm in this freedom, this brand new freedom, this new form of righteousness that was not man's righteousness, but God's own righteousness that had been declared to people. He says, you who are trying to be justified by the law, have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. And there's another one of those terms that these days uh, gets, I think, totally misused and abused by the church. Next uh, next time on our next program, we will talk about that phrase, fallen from grace, and what does it really mean? Uh, but we're out of time for this program. Uh, this week, we appreciate you tuning in and listening to us here. Uh, Joel is going to give you some information. If you would like to contact us, we'd love to hear from you. Well, I've got a uh, website called graceroots.org, graceroots, R-O-O-T-S, dot O-R-G. You can get a hold of us uh, on a form on uh, that website. You can browse it around or uh, just listen in week in and week out as Cap and I get together each week for Growing in Grace. And we thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Baruzaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ.